Someone mentions Otway, what's your first thought? Someone says Otway, I always think of this real deadpan, tongue in cheek, throw away, am I being serious, am I not, um, delivery. That's the first thing. And a pair of mad, wild, staring eyes that make Mick Fleetwood look sane. Um, and then I think of, I suppose second, you, you, you think of the white shirt, <laughs> and the, the barnet. Um, and then you think of the, the old grey whistle test performance. Forget which year it was, but it was a seminal performance. There was nothing like it with Wild Willie will charging about with a plank of wood. Or what sounded like a plank of wood. I think he had built the guitar himself, as I remember. Um, and um, it, actually, it actually reminded me of um, Robert Gordon and Link Ray, <laughs> who appeared around at the same time, um, doing very sort of serious tongue-in-cheek Elvis impressions. Um, the combination of, of, of Wild Willie and, and, and Otway uh, somehow was just a total piss take of everything that was serious in music and yet it, it had a real place. It was important that people were doing that because it goes to show that you didn't have to be 17 years old and to be um, down the marquee just to, to, just to be necessarily punk. Punk was an attitude and it was a, it was a... It also had a lot of Britpop in it as well. It had this kind of kinksy values to it, which I really liked. Um, but it's, it's one of those... It's one of those people that, um, well, he's one of those people that make you, makes you, um, makes you wonder sometimes whether he really is, uh, whether he really gives a damn or not about um, music. I think that's quite a nice attitude to have. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to Otway. So, uh, Sorry, somebody really snotting there. <laughs> John Otway, he's a loony. He's a loony, that man. He did a tour of people's living rooms, and I remember writing in. I saw it. A competition in Melody Maker, and I, I bought about three copies and um, sent him for whatever the competition was, or, or, or I wrote three letters or something, because I desperately wanted him to come and play in my living room, and I didn't win, so I was rather gutted about that. But um, I came across Otway, well, I think like most people did really, when um, he and Wild Willie Barrett did Really Free, which was probably the, the seminal, seminal punk performance on record, I thought. To me, I mean, there was classic moments, obviously, bands like 999 and The Clash and whatever, and The Pistols, but then Otway came along and it was like this, this, this I don't know, this, this amphetamined hippie, <laughs> madly screaming, and just, it seemed so, um, it just seemed such a, such a collision of ideas and values that, that, that he should be so aggressive and so wired and so uh, nonsensical. And um, yet you could still hear this brilliant songwriting somewhere beneath the surface. And um, I couldn't believe it when everybody didn't love it as much as I did. And uh, I also couldn't believe it a few years later when he released a record called Geneva, or a, or a year later, a record called Geneva, when he showed the real serious side of his songwriting. And at that point, I mean, I remember stopping in my bedroom, the first time I ever heard it on the radio, and my, my whole life changed, my whole world stopped for like three minutes. And I'll never forget that moment because I was just felt so incredibly sad, but so peaceful and so full of, I don't know what the word is, awe, because I was, I was hearing such a majestic song and it really made me want to be a songwriter. David Bowie had done a lot for me in those ways, but when I heard Geneva it just made me think, I have to do this. It made me hurt and uh, almost brought me to tears. And it still does when I hear it sometimes. Is that all right? Yes, I think lovely, it's great. Well, it's true, it just it stopped my world. <laughs>